Trisha with Insectopia here to um, chat and sketch with you one more time. Um, I hope that you are all having a fabulous week. Um, I haven't seen anybody chit-chatting in the chat box just yet, so um, it might be one of those quicker nights because um, I am feeling a little bit tired tonight, but um, I am still excited to look at and draw the scorpion fly here with you. Will last be listening only. Oh no. Alright, Susan, I understand being behind on some work. Um, I've been working, uh, I've been doing a lot of traveling for work in the last four weekends, and so um, this is, uh, yes, this upcoming weekend is going to be the first weekend I'm not traveling in four weeks. So, Susan, you'll just have to, um, Susan, you'll just have to, you know, rewatch if you want, would like to draw a scorpion fly because they are pretty cool. Um, this is a male scorpion fly. It is only the males that get the scorpion's tail. All right. The females, their abdomen gets narrow and narrow and narrow, and then it kind of just ends a little bluntly. Um, and um, this male guy, he gets that additional little, uh, additional little tail that is a male reproductive organ. It is not a stinger, and they do not have venom. So, yeah, that is, um, that's a couple different things. I was just reading and make sure I'm all caught up in the chat chat. Um, let's see. There are a couple of things. Um, scorpion flies are in the order. Mecoptera. And I think that these would be the only family in Mecoptera that we would probably draw together. I might have a hanging fly that we can look at. But, um... I don't think that the Macopterans have a common name. They're such a unique group of insects that they don't really, um, that they don't even really get a common name. Um, let's see. Unless you want to call them all scorpion flies. All right. So that's going to be our order. Our family for all scorpions. For if you want to narrow it down, the family does include all of the actual scorpion flies, the ones that look like this. Um, and that is Panorpidae. And for Norpa. We thought they were a neuropteran. Has that changed? Mantis flies are a neuropteran, and scorpion flies are a mecopteran. And I get scorpion flies and mantis flies mixed up, too. Every now and again, I do get them mixed up. Um, just because they're both very unique, not flies, they both have very similar wing structures. Um... But mantis flies are actually hyper-metamorphic. They have five life stages rather than four. Egg, larva, larva, pupa, adult. Yeah, they have five um, life stages rather than four. These guys right here, the scorpion flies, are just going to have the four. They just have complete metamorphosis. Oh, sorry, I'm getting distracted. The identification on this individual that was collected in Pennsylvania in 2020. This was collected on June 18th on a campground in 2020 in Pennsylvania. And we're, its identification is Panorpa. I love that word. Um, there is only one other thing that I wanted to share with you, and that is um, this really cool diagram that I found when I was looking up scorpion flies. It's on Springer Link, but I, what I think that I can do is I think that I can share the link to the picture 
in the chat box. Um, it is going to have more of the, um, like, the specific terminology for scorpion flies than I have memorized all of the time. So if you wanted to add some bonus details to your nature journals, I just wanted to give you an additional little scientific diagram because I thought that it was really cool. All right. Okay, so um, up at the front of the head, we don't just have like a nice narrow flat head or anything like that. We've got that really, really elongated, um, elongated head here. And then at the very, very end of that elongated head, you're going to have those um, mandibles at the end. So it has the ability to chew and swallow its food. All right, so let's see. I've lost you guys. All right, here we are. So up here in the front of the head, we're just going to kind of add two different shapes to get our scorpion fly's head down. We are going to start with kind of a really light D shape here up on the top, but then you've got that really nice elongated mount head here, so we're just going to give it a nice long snout, and I'm going to leave it kind of blunt at the end. Keep in mind, I always sketch pretty light to start, and then we go back, we're going to zoom in, we're going to look at even more fine details. And um, if you uh, have any questions or comments, go ahead and let me know in the chat, and I can keep it up. Is this the one Amy calls a double imposter? I mean, I would agree. I'm curious about what the double is because I do see that, I mean, it's a scorpion imposter, but what else is it mimicking? So we've got the thorax here. It's going to come up. It kind of arches over the head here. And when the, um, when the body of the scorpion fly ends, it kind of comes down at a pretty heavy slant here before it comes back up as the tail. So um, what I'm going to do is give it that arch, and then I'm going to kind of end it flat here. Now, from here to here, we've got the back of the head to the end of the thorax. We're going to continue the abdomen from this. Um, but we're looking at three pieces of this thorax. We're going to call them pro, meso, and meta, right? The first, the second, and the third pieces. On pro is where your first leg is, and I'm looking right around, I'm looking right around here. Come on, Terry. All right, right around here is my guide. This piece that you can see kind of bulging out, that's the hip bone of the front leg. That's what we call the coxa. Or you could call it the pro coxa because it's in that pro section, that first section here. Um, I'm just going to give it an oval shape, and then I'm going to move on. We'll go ahead and add the rest of the parts when we are zoomed in. Let's see. For meso and meta, for the middle and the hind legs, they're both more slanted backwards. And what I know about looking at this scorpion fly once or twice this week, those hind legs are incredibly long. Like, the hind legs are long. Um, when we look at the scorpion fly zoomed out so you can see it all together, the front legs and the middle legs look like they could just walk around, whereas the hind legs go longer than the length of the wings. Um, and I've had conversations with um, one or two students this week, actually, because they chose a scorpion fly last week. Um, and I've had one or two conversations about why we think the hind legs um, are so long. And I don't think that we've ha gotten a good answer yet. So I am already seeing some pretty uh, big issues with my sketch. When I zoom in, I'm going to be adding some of the, and I'm going to be fixing it up. So right now I'm just trying to get some graphite on the paper so that we have some guidelines to work off of. All right, so let's get the abdomen all. Oh, not a fly either. You're right, it is also not a fly, which would make it a double imposter. Um... The way to tell if something is a true fly or not is you count how many words it is. So if it's two words, like a robber fly or a house fly, then it's a true fly. 
If the word is one word, like a butterfly or a scorpion fly or a dragonfly, um, then it is not a true fly. It's kind of a fun rule to know because then you can automatically know what bugs are true bugs and what bugs just get bug in their name. I wanted to give us a fully zoomed out view of this scorpion fly because I haven't given you a measurement yet and I wanted to make sure we did that before I forgot. So from the back of, from the front of the head, the abdomen is not straightened out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go the length of the body and then I'm going to measure the well, the thing is, all right, so I'm just going to give you this measurement first. So from the front of the head, and I go straight down to kind of the furthest place the tail goes, that's 0.91 centimeters. 0.91 centimeters. And then the rest of the tail is about 0.3. So in total, from the front of the head to the end of the tail, if you um, if you straightened the tail out, it would be 1.21 centimeters long. I'm curious about to the length of the end of the wings. One point two seven. So the wings are longer than the body, even if the body is all the way stretched out. Uh, that applies to lots of critters. But crane flies are both cranes and flies, I guess. Well, crane flies are true flies. <laughs> you guys are silly. Dragonflies aren't dragons. You're right. You're right. And dung flies aren't actually dung. Um, so from here, we're going to be taking the abdomen down. The abdomen actually does get pretty narrow before it comes back up into that tail shape. Um, and I don't have a good picture or a way to show you um, how the abdomen goes all the way to the tail. But what I do have is a picture of the pupa of a uh, of a scorpion fly. Yeah. Like that. That's the pupa. So, what you're seeing are the is the developing abdomen um, before you, you know you have the wings that disrupt it. So the top one is the male. You can see he's got the scorpion tail at the bottom. And the bottom one is the female. She doesn't have a scorpion tail. Um, and you can see how their abdomens just kind of get really narrow and they come down like that. And when we are zoomed in on the abdomen, we're probably going to come back to this image to help us um, get kind of the layering on the abdomen right. I also love these pupa because you can see those dots on the side of the abdomen. And those are the spiracles. So right here, that's where the scorpion fly is going to breathe through. And on this one, I think it's even cooler because if you look a little bit like past these dots, you can see these little white strings that look like veins. They're not actually veins. They're, um, they're tracheoles. They are essentially oxygen tubes that run throughout the body to oxygenate their cells because their blood does not carry oxygen. Um... Yes, so that is a fun little fun little graph. I'm um, not drawing, but I wanted to share that with you. <laughs> and it'll help us get the tail done. All right, so I'm going to make my tail kind of come up and pointed just a little bit so that I can start the tail coming in an upward direction. Um, I am just getting some basic shapes down. Keep in mind, we are going to be zooming in and spending more time on these close up. But um, there are kind of two shapes here. There's this triangular shape here, and then there's this kind of more raindrop or uh, this more raindrop shape tail. Or the scorpion tail. Uh, right, the only other thing I like to do is I like to add where our wings are coming out. So right around here, um, it's going to be 
right at that end of that first third, that's where our wings come out. And they're not gonna come up all the way at the top because you can see there's still that little bit of an arched back above it. So that is gonna be about my guess for the wing as it comes out. All right, now we have our nice light sketch done. We have an idea as to where we're going. We know we're gonna stay on the paper. Time to zoom in. We have to be total fibbers because insects break all the rules. See, we can never say all insects blank because the insects look at us, they laugh, and they say, watch me. Like, and even rules that you think are, like, steadfast, this is always the case. There are insects out there that are breaking them. Um, like the fact that insects have six legs. There is an insect out there that has four legs. Makes me mad. He has some really good mouth parts. They're really complex, and we're going to have a good time drawing them. In fact, when we get to the mouth parts, I might, I might draw it really quick sideways, but then turn him face on and draw it, his mouth parts face on in detail somewhere, because the mouth parts are really the cool, cool part on this guy. Other than the tail, obviously. All right, I'm going to get closer to the head. We're going to zoom into the top portion of the head because I want to see a little bit more around the eyes before we get started. Yep, that's what I thought. Okay. I was hoping that we could zoom down and see a little bit, but we're not going to. All right. So this is going to be the top half of our head here. Um, they have fairly large compound eyes. I'm honestly not sure how well that they see. Um, I do know that they primarily eat dead insects, which is kind of cool. Kind of cool, I guess. All right, the compound eye takes up most of the head, and it's narrower on the top than at the bottom, so it kind of gets wider towards the bottom. I like to start when I can with the compound eye, getting it to be the right shape, and then I just build the head around it. Okay, so uh, for our head here, the connection of the head to the thorax, I'm going to be changing quite a bit, so I'm just going to erase that back here. I'm going to take right above our compound eye, and it's going to be a nice kind of um, half circle here. Whoop. Kind of like that, because we also are going to have, looks a little pixely to me, um, we're also going to have the pronotum, or that first segment of the thorax right there, kind of acting as a neck. So right around here. Um, the right here, right about where the end of our original D was, you can see there's this little bit of a, um, there's a little bit of a, projection off of the inside of its head. I'm not sure what the purpose of it is, but I've looked at this guy enough that I have a thought that if he, if this um, scorpion fly looked down, these would probably um, run up against the bottom side of his thorax. Um, and I'm not sure if it would be kind of to click it in or if it could make some type of squeaking sound, but those are my guesses. Um, admittedly, there is not a whole lot of research out there on scorpion flies. Um, there is some, but there is a lot left to be learned about them. And uh, we don't even know their species, essentially. They have species groups where they say, well, these cluster are, um, we believe they're a species, and, you know, they're working it out, but we don't really know them very well just yet. Insects didn't read the field guides. Yep, this is true. All right, so I'm going to come down uh, the front of the head. I'm actually pretty happy with the shape here, but then we do have to add our antennal socket. 
so I just like to go ahead and give you guys these words as they come up. Where'd my text box go? There it is. If this is your first time, welcome! These are the three segments of an insect's antenna. Um, if it is not your first time, you've probably seen these up before. Uh, the first segment of our antenna is the scape. That's actually um, going to be that big chunkier segment that looks like a rectangle that comes right off the head. That's the scape. The pedestal tends to be a little bit smaller than the remainder segments. You can see it's kind of circular right here. The pedestal is smaller than the scape, but it actually looks a little bit bigger than the rem all of the other segments. So we've got that second segment here. Now the remainder of the segments of the uh, uh, scorpion fly's antenna are the flagellum. And you can see that this scorpion fly's antenna is fairly long. All right. When insects have long, straight antenna with no feathers, no frills, and they kind of just wiggle all over the place, the most insect antenna, we call them filiform antenna. If you think of an insect, most of the time they have filiform antenna, like cockroaches, mantids, um, grasshoppers. We love them. Alright, so I'm going to, the remainder of the segments in that flagellum are very small, and so we're not going to count them, and they are all very evenly, um, like, they're level with one another. There isn't a lot of, like, segmentation or, like, separation between the segments. So we can just do something like this to keep our antenna right about that same length, and then I'm going to double the line. I do want to make sure... Um, I do want to make sure that the end of the antenna does narrow in comparison to the rest of it. This is the trickiest part, is doubling it up exactly the same way. Always get a little shaky. There we are. So we've got that guy here, and then I'm going to come back through and give it all of the individual segments. Um, there are probably, there are so many segments in this that, um, no one is going to count them. Once antenna get this long, uh, they will instead compare the length of the antenna to a body part. Would we see a raspy surface on the thorax if it was for squeaking? Possibly. Let's go look. on the left, and I am not seeing any kind of rough we're going to overexpose it really quick see if it'll any ridges will pop out I just see, I see some hair but I do not see any ridges in there so maybe it's for something else, but it definitely looks like it would fit perfectly between these two things. Oops. confused about this superhero conversation happening in the, um, in the chat. Uh, I approve, but it confuses me slightly. 
All right, let's see. Are those little bumps mites? I do not believe we were seeing mites in there. I think that it, they were just um, like pieces of like rough. You're about to have me say rough edges of the exoskeleton after saying we didn't see any ridges, but that's what it looks like. It looks like just like little bumps off of the exoskeleton. Oh, an evil botanist. This all makes sense now. All right, so I'd like you to notice that the top of the head here does come down and create a fairly strong angle. This isn't something that kind of happens over time. The, end, the edge of the head right here at the bottom of the compound eye, it comes in and then it makes this really nice long, nice long head here. And then I am going to have my head, you can see it kind of bends inward just a little bit. I'm going to have it um, bend inward just a little bit. And I want to zoom in closer to this and see what's happening down there. All right, this is as close as we can get. So um, it might be a good time to... Um, also check that graphic that I sent the link to, um, but we can see some of the palps, um, we can see the mandibles here, uh, so I'm pretty happy with some of the pieces that we can see. Um, this here and here, here and here, those look like palps to me. And then, uh, you also have right here, this is that mandible, the one that's on the close side. So we would consider these chewing mouth parts, or we could call them mandibulate. That's fun. Mandibulate mouth parts are any mouth parts that have mandibles. All right. So we've got some cute little labial and maxillary palps here coming off of the bottom that make it look suspiciously like a beard or a mustache. We love them. All right, we got another guy. And what I would prefer to do instead of drawing this mouth part sideways, I want to see if we can make some type of quicker sketch looking at it from a front. right here in the middle because it is not an even pin but that's gonna work good for me all right so we can see the palps here um those are going those really long ones that are coming off of the side those are going to be the maxillary palps um and then these right here that is a a, a fun little guy oh my goodness no, those are the mandibles. Sorry, I'm just looking at them really close. Okay, so those guys that are going in that direction, those are the mandibles of our scorpion fly. And then we have cute little hair that makes him look like he's got a, a mustache, but those hairs are actually uptake hairs. Um, and they are connected to... 
something called the gallia, which is like its tongue. So it's got, those little hairs are actually little uptake hairs to like lick up all of the juices. So if they're eating a dead insect, they can have the ability to kind of chew through the exoskeleton, drink up all the yummy stuff. And they've got, they actually do have both maxillary and labial palps, but the labial palps are very, very short and they are only visible from the back. So when we were looking at it from the side and we saw those two little itty bitty um, palps at the back, those were, those are the labial palps. And the maxillary palps are really obvious from the front. And what's cool about that graphic that I posted a little bit earlier is that it has the cutout of the head from the front and the back, if you didn't notice that. So the front of the head is on the left and the back of the head is on the right. And so it's kind of a, a cool little um, cutout of that, um, of the head. All right. Yeah, add some labial palps. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Bloop, 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 bloop. Ready, and then bloop, 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 bloop. I love that the mandibles look like they're going backwards. Honestly, it doesn't make too much sense to me to have your mandibles going in that direction. I can tell you that they do and that they are. I don't know. Let's look at the back of the head. What do they eat? Are they predatory? As adults, they generally are going to be eating dead insects. Their immature stages, their larval stages, um, sometimes are predatory. But most of the time, scorpion flies are not predatory. Most of the times, they're eating dead insects. So it brings, it makes me think that maybe, um, those mandibles are backwards like that. So when they are, so that it's easier when they're kind of working their way into the exoskeleton. There we are. Okay. So right up here at the back of the head, we're going to have where the thorax connects in. We have... Ah, the pronotum, the mesonotum, and the metanotum. Pro, meso, meta. Those are our three regions of our thorax. So from here, we do have that little bit of a neck, so I'm going to give it just this little bit of a, of a neck at the back of our head. And then we have this piece of this, we're going to call it a sclerite, or a piece of an exoskeleton, um, like a piece of a... It's a sclerite. It looks like it's just kind of wrapped around the neck. It's kind of cool. Um, and the and the fold in it makes it look like a scarf to me, this piece here. Looks like it's trying to keep itself nice and warm. So it's coming up and forward and... Kind of like a little scarf. All right, so I'm gonna be moving, shifting this back just a little bit because when I sketched, I didn't leave room for the neck, but that's okay. So after we've got our, her little scarf done, then we can add this hump back here. We want it to come up and over, up and over the head, and we wanna make sure we give enough room for the wings, and it actually levels off pretty good here. So instead of continuing going up, I'm just going to level it off right around here. And I think that'll be right about good for when I pull this wing up. All right. So after that, we're going to go downward. So let's see. We've got at the base of this piece here, that's going to be our coxa.
Yeah, that's right. So right at the base here, that um, expanded piece out, that is the coxa, right about here. Whoop. This piece here is the coxa. This one is the femur. Then we've got tibia and tarsal segments. Let me go ahead and write that for everybody out there. Um, normally I just go femur, tarsi, but because the coxae are so readily available on this one, I think we can write cox on here too. Coxa is singular, coxae is plural. Oh, we're going to make it singular so it fits. Okay. All right, so right around here, we've got that hip bone. It's going to come up and out and right around here. And then for after this, we are going to be moving our leg up, down, and kind of forward. We're going to be following this kind of trajectory. But I want to get... I want to get the body and the, the wings done, and then we'll come back for the legs. So we've got that front leg all situated, all figured out. Now we have to um, come on back just a little bit. We're, there's a little bit of that separation between the front and the middle leg. And then on our middle leg, it also has a decent sized coxa, but um, it's going to start a little bit lower than this one. So notice that the coxa on the middle leg, so the mesocoxa, starts right around here and goes to here, all right? So looking at this insect, and it's a, it is completely lateral, it almost looks like this one is further away, and that's just because it's higher up on the body. And that's what I had to check earlier. I was wondering if I had the specimen twisted, but it is level. It, it, what we're looking at is just, a, um, is just a raised upper leg. So the coxa on the middle leg starts right about where the last one finished and goes down from there. And then we're going to do the same thing on, but we've got too much space now. Alright, and then we're going to do the same thing on the hind leg. So the segmentation on our, on our um, scorpion fly is at an angle. I'd like you to notice that. So um, when we're looking at the top up here, it's going to be a lot closer than at the bottom. Alright, I don't know if that made sense. But, yay, alrighty, so we've got some of that situated. Uh, there is a good amount of, um, of striation. There's a good amount of like lines here, kind of in between some of the sclerites, and we also have little bit of kind of this upper plate here. All right. Let's, I want to see what the base of the wing looks like. Actually, it has, what I was looking for was any type of cap or musculature to kind of protect the wing, but it doesn't have anything right here at the end to protect it. It just comes off on one sharp point and it comes up and goes out. So it kind of ends at this knob here. As you can imagine, finishing the abdomen from here is really, really tricky. Uh, that's why I brought, I brought this. It's a cheat. That'll help us with the abdomen. <laughs> um, at one, two, three. This would be where our abdom abdominal segments start. 
We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten abdominal segments. I believe that's what our graph shows. Ah, it's going to say nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, maybe they count the entire piece at the end as well. Nine. Okay. So, from our sketch here, there is some filling in the blank that we have to do. Uh, there is a little bit of the end of our thorax up here on the top. It is mostly round, but keep in mind it does kind of come down narrow pretty quick here. Um, and then we're just going to end, kind of end the thoracic region. It's going to be pretty tall still, but the abdomen is what gets narrow here. So let's see, like this. And keep in mind the pupa is a little bit more, um, blown up than the adult's abdomen would be, uh, but we are going to step it out. So let's see, we're going to say we're going to say eight segments to the tail. So one, two, three, Five. And try that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. All right. So I've got my abdomen kind of subdivided out to the right number of segments. So all I'm going to do is kind of take at each segment. I'm going to give it a little bit of a convex line, so it's got a little bit of a kind of a bulge to it. But we're still going to follow that trajectory of going down. And the, uh, the bottom of the body is going to be significantly less um, rounded. Uh, it's going to be cleaner on the bottom than it is on the top. abdomen, the end of this all figured out, but I do want to add the tail, and the tail is so much more fun to draw when we are looking at it in real life. Plus, this is what it looks like once it is sclerotized and large. guys for a minute, so sorry if I was not in the chat box. Alright, I'm good. I didn't miss anything important. Alright, so at the very, very end, this last and final segment of the abdomen is kind of short, and um, it's kind of short and uh, significantly smaller than the remainder of them. It also ends in a kind of a blunt square. If I was to point that out, you can see the tip of it is right here, and it goes straight across. It's kind of blunt, and it's just this little itty bitty segment at the end. Uh, then after that, you've got this segment here that starts narrower than it's outside, and you've got that triangular segment, to, that, that like triangular shape. And it looks like the back is just a little bit taller than the front so that it can easily connect to the bulb at the end. So we've got this guy here. I'm actually going to round that corner off. It's too sharp now. Right about there. And then you notice that the, um, the stinger portion of our of our scorpion fly um, is kind of multi-segmented. Uh, at the base, it's got this little cup segment here. That cup 
hub segment is just going to be used to connect to here. And then we have this large bulbous scorpion tail. I'm going to start not from the top, but a little bit down. I'll show you why momentarily. I'm going to create one scorpion tail, but leave a little bit of space up here because there are more pieces than this. If we look right above the scorpion tail, there's an additional um, there's an additional appendage up here that runs almost the length of the scorpion tail. Okay? Alright. And then, if you wanted, you could even add the, then go all the way up to the top and add the far side of the stinger. So you'd end up with um, kind of a multi-piece thing, looking like this. But I do want to let you know that the stinger is not sharp and pointy at the end. If we look at the stinger, like uh, head on, essentially. Mm, yeah, turn it sideways just a little bit. Here we are. Oops. I did not take you on that journey with me. Here you go. There. The stinger is actually claspers. Alright, so at the very, very end, this part right here, this is not a sharp pony, pointy thing. There is no venom involved. This is the male reproductive organ that he's going to use to hold on to the female and then to transfer his, um, I'm not sure if I have it right in scorpion flies, but I would guess they would call it a sperm packet to transfer his sperm packet. Is the stinger between, or are there two stingers? The stinger is the the stinger is kind of in between the two pieces. It runs along this groove on the top here. So if you see right about here, there's this groove that goes right to the center of the clas claspers. Well, this little small finger-like attachment here will follow along this. All right, so um, that gives you another another fun view. I'm actually gonna oh, the scorpion fly is a kind of a fun one to see in multiple views. Right, so that is our that's our little stinger, the male reproductive organ. Uh, let's go back. We're gonna finish up our the outline of our wings, and then we'll do legs. So on scorpions, the stinger is not even connected to the reproductive organs, right? I would say that that is a true statement. I'm honestly not sure how scorpions mate. But their tail is used for venom, and it's used to be, it's the end of their digestive tract. So normally, scorpion flies hold their wings up to a, in a way that actually hides their stinger. You can't actually see it most of the time. Luckily on this specimen, I let two of the wings droop a little bit to show off the stinger. Um, I just wanted to show it to my to my best bug pals. All right. So we've got nice long, long wings. I'm going to do this lightly first because it's going over a whole lot of lines. But it's just going to be coming down right about at this angle. It looks like it's going to hit the ground. It needs to hit the ground earlier. We're going to see maybe the first two abdominal segments, and that's about it. And 
and then I want the it to go underneath the tail. And those wings are fairly long. Meat copterins, right? Our um, our scorpion flies have four wings, and their four wings are all full length. They've got front and hind wings that are the same length. But they're not isopterins. That's a bug joke. Alright, so up on the top, and then we're going to come on down. The very end of the, the wing here does have a little bit, it's a little bit longer on the bottom, so I'm just going to make sure I get that all taken care of. And then it comes up nice and smooth. I am not spending any time on wing venation, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you want, you can pause it and zoom in if that would be, um, if that's something that you are interested in. I do know that some of the scorpion fly identification happens not in the wing venation, but in the spotting on the wings. Uh, different scorpion fly species or species groups will have different, like, patching uh, patterns on their wings. Although, I would also argue that there is a good amount of diversity in that also, so it's a little bit tricky to use as an identification. <laughs> They're also not homopterans. Oh, Susan, you got it. You got the bug joke. I love it. Love it so much. All right, let's do some legs. We could, if we wanted, do like long, like just some lengthwise veins here, just so that it doesn't look like we didn't do anything in the wings. And we could also give it maybe a little bit of kind of that brick patterning in it. Um... Because then it looks at least like you're seeing through something. <gasps> oh, it was both. It was an entomological et 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 etymological joke. <laughs> Say that ten times fast. So now my goal is to see a front leg really well, and front le this front leg tends to be really tricky. Aha! Got one! Alright. This is going to be like drawing a scorpion fly's leg in many angles. Because it's bent in a weird way, so I'm going to have to move the insect in a weird way. Just, all right, so this is going to be, this is your femur, so right here from the base all the way up to here, the top is fairly straight, the bottom is convex, kind of convex away from the, the main support. We are going to be connecting it right here to that procoxa, we get the pro femur, it's going to come up, it does not look like it's too incredibly long, so I am going to make sure that my... Pro femur does not go into my mouth so that they don't have to worry about them overlapping. So that is my pro femur moving forwards. Then we also can see the tibia here, although I do believe I have some friends that love tibial spines, and if I can see them, I should show them. Aha! There are your tibial spines right there. So if we follow the tibia up, it's fairly narrow at the top, it gets wider at the base, and then right at the end, we have a tibial spine. I was trying to see, there are two. If we look over here, this is actually the front leg on the other side. 
There are two tibial spines. So we've got the tibia coming down, and then you have the little spine, and then we have a whole bunch of tarsal segments. If I don't deactivate my camera, you don't go on the magnification journey with me. There we are. Okay. So it's this one right here, this set, for the front leg. We can see one, two, the tibial spines on either side. We have one, two, three, four, five tarsal segments. Yep. Um, I would say one, two, and three are rectangular, four is that triangular shape, and then the fifth one is raindrop shaped. These are all words that I made up, descriptive words that I've made up to help you get, to help me describe tarsal, um, forms. And they generally come in those three or four shapes, rectangles, uh, triangles, hearts, and raindrops. It's really funny. Okay, so that first tarsal segment's really long, and something that I we that I've kind of picked up over time is if our insect has a short femur and a short tibia in comparison to its body, then it's going to use the first tarsal segment, this one, as kind of a way to lengthen its leg more than using it as a like a toe like a toe segment. So that first segment that's really nice and long is probably going to be going more towards the ground rather than coming out flat. And then after that segment, the remainder of them are going to come out mostly flat. Just an observation. So one, two, three, four, five, and the claws. All right, now we just need the middle and the hind legs. All right, so I am not going to do a lot of shifting for the middle leg, um, mostly because the middle leg is pretty much the exact same as the front leg, except that it's going to be going backwards rather than forwards. So it's everything is about the same shape, everything is about the same size. Um, we could honestly copy and paste it and move some pieces around if we were on a computer. But here we are. So our femur is going to be connecting to the base of the coxa right here. and. Um, it's not going to be going forward, it's going to be going backwards. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to kind of be going over top of this um, hind leg here, and probably even going up close to the end of the abdomen. So the femur, remember, is flat on the top, but then kind of a convex or kind of muscular rounded on the bottom. So we're going to add that shape right over top of everything and then erase everything on the inside. Yay. All right, so now we've got a coxa and a femur. And the tibia is probably a little bit longer in the middle leg. Maybe not too much, though. So our tibia is going com coming down. It still starts off narrow and gets a little bit wider. All right. And then we still have those five tarsal segments and two tibial claws or tibial spines. So this 
Uh, we've got that first tarsal segment, that's that longer rectangular segment here, and then the remainder of them are going mostly flat, remember, so that next segment is about half the length of the first one, the third segment is just a little bit smaller than that, and then you have that triangular segment, and then the raindrop segment. Cute. He could almost be standing on something flat. I try to some. I, I try and make sure the legs kind of end at the same place. This one could have come down just a little bit more, but he maybe he's standing on a rocky surface. That's allowed. Good morning, Chaos. Welcome. We have been talking about scorpion flies. And joking around about bug words. Now, I hope that you remember me mentioning from earlier how incredibly long the hind legs of these scorpion flies are. Um, I just want you to take that in for a minute. Try and see kind of where that hind leg starts and where it ends. It is so incredibly impressive. And um, the ends of the cocks of those hip bones are way, way, way below where um, the abdomen actually connects in. So, right, this is where our leg starts. This is where the abdomen connects it up. So this whole part here, that's the coxa. We've got a little bit of the abdomen, and then our, or a little bit of the thorax, and the abdomen. And here, we've got the femur, the tibia, and then the tarsi. So I'm going to try and get some basic size down first, and then we can zoom in and we can see if there's anything cool about the legs. To me, they just look like they are thin and long, but chaos. Scorpion flies are a mecopterin. They're in the order mecoptera, not neuroptera. Um, but you're not the only one who thought that. Um, and maybe I told you wrong last week. Maybe that was the thing. Sometimes I get scorpion flies and mantis flies mixed up, and mantis flies are the ones that are a neuropterin. So maybe I told you wrong? Um, all right, so right here at the very end of the cock set, we've got a nice long femur, and I'm just going to take it right here from the end. I'm not going to erase any of that. I'm just going to imagine it going through and just not draw the line there. Ha ha ha. Alright, and then the femur is probably going to come up all the way to about the end of the second segment, second um, abdominal segment. Pretty happy with that. Alright. Erase the abdomen. Okay, and then for the tibia, it's going to be longer than, look how long it is. The femur's got to be longer, doesn't it? I'm going to zoom in. So scorpion flies are in an order, um... They're in the order Mecoptera, and they exist in there with um, hanging flies, scorpion flies, and Bereids. I don't know what the common name for a Bereid is. B-O-R-E-I-D-A-E. -E. So that femur is long enough that if it was stretched out, it would go to right around the third abdominal segment. So I am going to be making my femur even longer. I'm going to change the angle a little bit. More like that. Okay. 
Okay. Oops. Femur. <laughs> I changed its angle from like this to like this to lengthen it. Um, and I was comparing its length to the length of the body under the microscope and noticing that my femur needed to be significantly longer. I want these lines to be straighter, but that's just how they're going to be tonight. The tibia is going to come down. Right about there. I'm pretty happy with. So we've got that coxa, the really long femur, the really long tibia. And then we do have tarsal segments at the end here. So let's go back and check those out. I'm sorry that you couldn't see my drawing. tibia ends and the tarsi begins. These are the hind tibial segments. Um, uh, these tibial, tarsal segments. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Um, these I would almost consider all more rectangular segments. They don't really get triangular towards the end here. They also kind of almost look like they've got teeth at the edges of all of them. They've got these really, really strong looking bristles. Um, so that's a, a kind of a cool thing to note. Also, it looks like the, uh, the claws here are biped. It's fun to use a computer to zoom in even further than what your microscope can zoom in. Uh, maximum zoom on computer and microscope. Alright, so that's femur, that's tibia, and then we get tarsi. Oh, we got the two tibial spines. Boop, boop. Alright, so one, two, three, four, five. One. Nice and long and thin. Two is about a third of the size, so significantly smaller. Three is a little bit smaller than that. Four is even tinier. And then five with the two claws at the end. I mean, he's pretty cool. I didn't have a whole lot of faith in me when we started this, but I think we got somewhere with him. I like him a lot. Um, so this is what I ended up with. We have the zoomed in image of the mouth parts from the head on. We've got the antenna, all of the legs, the abdomen, the cool little uh, stinger from the side and from the head on view. And we've got the, the wings. I do actually really like how the legs turned out on this one. I will admit that the, um, I drew this insect once before this week, and it didn't turn out really great with my students. So I'm really excited that this one turned out really nice. Really nice and pretty. Practice makes perfect, ladies and gentlemen. So, let's see. Um, the only thing I haven't shared with you would be, um, let's see. This is kind of fun. We looked at the pupa 
but these are um, larval, the larval form of scorpion flies. They look like little caterpillars, okay? They crawl around on the ground, and the larvae are predatory. So these guys, but they're crawling around in the grass eating other insects. Um, some of them are predators, and some of them just eat dead insects. Um, but they all have eight pro legs. So if we count right underneath them, right here, what you would consider like those fake caterpillar legs, um, scorpion fly larvae have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whereas caterpillars, most caterpillars that I can think of right at the, off at the top of my head have four pairs of pro legs. But to give it a little bit of leniency, I would say, I would probably say four to six. Um, with eight pro legs, it can't be a caterpillar, it's got to be something else. Scorpion flies are just really cool about that. Do you said they look like little protrusions, but they are considered pro legs. They, um, they have crochets at the bottom. They have little hooks at the bottom to help them hold on. You, from those images, they don't look super gra grippy. They don't look like pro leg, like a caterpillar's pro legs, but they're still considered it. Sawflies do have adorable baby faces. <laughs> And you find them in clusters, like in groups, generally. Um, whereas these guys are predatory and they're not going to live together. Oh, and you said earwig flies. I've never heard of an earwig fly. Um, if it's an earwig, earwigs are in a different order. But I don't know if I've ever heard somebody add flies to earwigs. Those are so cool! Where are these from? Alright, ladies and gentlemen, go look up earwig flies. They're in a crazy family, and yes, they are in this same order. They are a mycopteran, and I've never even heard of this family. It's Meropeidae. Meropeidae? The earwig flies. Interesting. I want to know more about them. Do they exist today or are they just in fossils? There looks like they're specimens. I will be looking further into this. That's really cool. Earwig flies are different from earwigs in this case. I've never heard of an earwig fly before this very moment, but I just looked it up and it's in this family here. It's closely related to a scorpion fly, and it looks like an earwig with scorpion fly wings. So instead of having the scorpion tail, it comes out and has pinchers at the end like an earwig. You've seen some in Brazil. Cool. That's fun. I was saying that there might be a species in Australia to... The Meroptuber. Okay, okay, there is one in North America. It occurs throughout the east from Ontario to Georgia and west to Kansas. This lives where I am. Alright, I will be finding one of these. This is my new goal. Cool.
All right. So, um, we are going to be getting, um, we're getting close to the end here. Um, I know that many of you like to see the uh, sketch in its entirety, so we can do that from here. That is my cute little scorpion fly friend. It's got a, it's got close-ups on the mouth parts and on the stinger at the end. It's not a stinger, it's a reproductive organ. I am actually very happy with the, the leg lengths. I was afraid that because they're all kind of, they're at different heights and they're different lengths that they weren't all going to kind of knead up nicely at the end, but he turned out pretty happy. Yay! Awesome! So, um, if you are curious, I also teach on a platform called OutSchool. Um, that's where I teach kiddos ages 5 to 8, 9 to 12, and um, there is a link in the description box if you want to sign up for any of those classes. If you've never taken an OutSchool class before and you sign up um, and you use the link, then you get $20 free! A free classes. It's a lot of fun. You should uh, give the link out to your friends and family. Um, that is just a reminder to subscribe to the channel. I really, really appreciate, and it's a, a reminder for me to appreciate all of you for showing and joining and hanging out and chatting bugs with me once a week for years, for years, ladies and gentlemen. This has been absolutely fantastic. Um, and so, for those of you out there who are watching and you're not chatting with me, if you subscribe, you can chat in the chat box. We can have a good time. Uh, right, down here at the bottom, that is a link to my QR code. Feel free to donate if you are able. Um, I am doing this full time now. It's what I do. It's what I love. You are awesome. Uh, you are awesome also. Um, Facebook and Instagram right here, at Insectopia2015. Um, that is where you can tag all of my, you can, you can at me and tag all of the fun thing pictures you post, whether it's on Facebook or Instagram, I love to see it. And then this is my email address, I like to see your drawings and or identify bugs for you if I can. Um, sometimes, you know, I try my best and it's a lot of fun and I really enjoy seeing insects from all over the place and sometimes it'll take me longer than I want it to to ID bugs, but most of the time I'm right on top of it, alright? So, I hope that you all have a... Oh, what's next week? I have a list now. So the plan for next week is a nymphalid. It's a butterfly. We're going to be doing a nymphalid next week. Um, via request of somebody in the chat. All right. I hope that you all have a fabulous rest of your week and stay buggy. Bye.